Hi, my name is Lauren Green and I am a data scientist for Freya Systems. I'm going to share with you about this blog I created last year um, called Creating a Dual Access Plot with ggplot2. In this video, I'm going to go through the blog and my process for solving this problem I ran into. So first, before getting into anything, let me talk about the problem I had. So I was creating a visualization um, to show the counts of incorrect and correct predictions I was making. Um, and these predictions were within Windows. Um, it's not really important. I was predicting if aircraft would be down for a long period of time based on how long they've been down up until that point in different windows. So this was the basic stack bar plot I made using ggplot. Um, pretty simple. Threw it together pretty quickly. You can see the code up here. And looking through it, I was noticing, okay, well, my incorrect counts are going down over time. But also, very obviously, the total number of predictions I'm making as the windows increase is also going down. So this can be a little misleading, it's not super clear. So I decided to make a second um, plot. And this time, instead of doing counts of correct and incorrect predictions, um, I switched over to percentages. So you can see here is my adjustment below. And as I suspected, the above plot was a little misleading. As you can see, the incorrect predictions actually percentage-wise were not going down. They even popped up a little bit in the later windows before um, going down again. But as you can see, this is giving some information that the above plot was not. Now, the problem is this also is not telling the full story. If I were to only show the percentage graph, um, you wouldn't understand that the number of predictions was decreasing as the windows were getting larger. Um, so both of these show some information that I needed. So that's when I decided I would like to show both on the same graph using a dual access plot. And that's when I began doing some research. Now, the first thing I ran across, and you might have run across as well, if you're looking at this, is that the creator of ggplot2, Hadley Wickham, is not a fan of dual access plots. Um, in his words, I agree that they can be useful when the axes are simple linear transformations of each other, but I don't think that they're useful enough for me to spend hours to implement them. So due to this, ggplot2 does not easily make dual access plots. Um, after some Googling, I did find some options and started working through it. I found several different resources. You'll see later that I ran into some issues. Um, no one tutorial seemed to cover everything that I needed. So that's why I ended up making this blog and ultimately this video to go through what I found to hopefully help you if you have run into a similar issue. So the first thing is to make the second axis. So this is possible in ggplot2 pretty easily. There's a secondary axis bit of code here you can add um, to your scale y continuous line of code and I'll show it in the overall code lower down below. Now the main thing you need to figure out is how your secondary axis relates to the primary axis. Um, as Hadley mentioned, he thinks they work best when there's a simple linear transformation of each other. Um, and you need to have something like that. Otherwise, this is not going to be doable for you. For me, count and percent are obviously related to each other. Um, but there's not a simple transformation to go from one to the other for me. As I was looking through my different plots, I was noticing that all my counts maxed out around 200. So I decided my secondary axis was just going to be half of the primary. And you can see that bit here. So this line of code is just simply creating my secondary axis, which is going to be on the right side. It's entitled percent incorrect. And all of the values are just half of whatever is on the left side on the primary axis. So when 200 is on the other side, 100 is on the right side. So that creates my secondary axis, but whatever I'm having um, on my graph to show um, the secondary axis, in this case the percents, I need to adjust those values because they're still going to go off of the primary axis. Everything's still working off the primary axis. So since I'm talking about percent, I took all the percent incorrects and doubled them um, so that they would get moved up properly to line up with that secondary axis. So these two bits of code were pretty easy to find Googling. Um, I thought this would do everything I needed to do, but I had some issues still. Um, so I'll scroll down to what my final product looked like. But when I first ran it, I had all my dots, but there was no line. And I could not understand why there wasn't a line. I had my beautiful secondary axis here, and you can see that where there'd be 100 is across from 200. So everything over here is half of what is on the primary axis. And also that these values 
are bumped up, they were doubled so that they would line up properly over here um, with the secondary axis. But I was missing a line and I could not figure out for the life of me why I was missing a line. So I did some research and I found several pieces of code that were helpful, as you can see, several different pieces of information along here um, to get this fixed. So the first bit I did was adding the group equals one to the geom line, um, which you can see down here. So in my geom line, here's right here. All that's doing is showing that um, this groups all the points together to make a single line. So I thought that would fix it, ended up not fixing it. So I had to do a little bit more digging. I started pinpointing that my issue may be in my new field. So I created a percent incorrect um, column and I obviously, if I'm doing percent incorrect, I only found the percents for when the value was incorrect. All the correct values, I put in A's. Because obviously, these would be inverses of each other. I don't need both. I don't need the percent correct and the percent incorrect on the graph. So I decided to do percent incorrect. I had added an A.remove equals true, thinking that would deal with the NAs here and just would ignore them and only deal with the percent incorrect values. But as I Googled more, it seemed like that was my issue and that was a problem. So instead, I went and created a new data, fa new data frame off of my prediction statistics data frame, called it prediction statistics per for a percent, and simply just removed all the NAs for the correct values. So it was only having them correct. So I used both data frames. This one I will use for the counts bar graph, and this one I will use for the percent line. So as you can see down here in my code, the bar graph is using the prediction stats and the, both the point and the line, which are created in the line graph, are using the prediction stats per percent. So this did fix my problem. And I was pretty relieved at this point that it fixed it. So as you can see, as I'm going through, so here's the line of code that adjusts all those percent incorrect to double them so that they line up properly. Because they're still working off of this axis, even though visually they're going to be going off of the secondary axis. Um, you can also see um, as I'm going through, so I got the, um, I changed the colors. I don't know if you noticed above um, the correct was red, the incorrect was this blue green color. That bothered me. I felt that the correct should be the blue green color and the incorrect should be the red. So I flipped those around. You can see here is everything to do with my y-axis. So the primary axis is the count over here. The secondary axis, here's all the code to both create um, the numbering. So they're all half of the primary axis and the name, percent incorrect. And then just also some titles and XXS and things like that. So I have my final um, visualization here. I was pretty happy with it, but there's still some changes I wanted to make. I noticed I... I liked this key here, but there was nothing explicitly explaining what this line graph was. You kind of had to just figure out that it was talking about the person incorrect over here. So I wanted to add um, an additional key element about that. I also wanted to add um, a little more scaling for the axis um, and just kind of tweak some things. So a lot of this ended up being pretty easy. So adding um, the additional legend, all it was was adding this to the aesthetic part of my geom line, which you can see down here. So that added the new legend. Um, but additionally, I didn't want titles for the legends. When I first ran that, it gave kind of random titles that I didn't want. So adding this little bit of code here removes any sort of titles from my legends. And the last thing I did was scaling the axes. So breaks equal sequence and laying out the sequence. So for the primary axis, Hey, went from 0 to 250 at increments of 25. And then here's all my secondary access codes. You can see over here, the breaks. I went from 0 to 105 um, in increments of 15. So at this point, I have my final graph. I have my secondary line graph with going along with the secondary axis. And this is telling us that that is the percent incorrect values. I still have my um, bar graph key up here. And you can see that um, my tick marks have a little more um, control over the different values, the spacing, um, to make that all a little bit clearer. So in conclusion, uh, happy with the result. I think this is clearly showing 
the combination that I was looking for, giving all the information that one would need. Hopefully, if you are having a similar issue trying to create a dual access plot that you found this video and also the blog in conjunction with it helpful. Thank you.